Well, good morning. I wanted to be able to share with you out of our Bible reading for today, and so uh, I'm actually going to go to Numbers 14, uh, the Old Testament today, and just share a few thoughts with you from there. And so uh, this is taking place after the spies had returned from the Promised Land, and they uh, 10 out of the 12 of them just gave a report of the fear of um, the spy of the sorry the large uh, people in the Promised Land, and just that they didn't think they could take it and uh, they were afraid of entering it. And so even notice um, what verse 3 says. Notice their concern about going into the promised land. Uh, in verse 3 of chapter 14, it says, Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become a prey. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? So their biggest fear is that they expect that their children are going to get killed and slaughtered when they go into the promised land. And that, that's what they're afraid of. Um, and so God punishes them by uh, forcing them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years and, uh, and not being able to enter the promised land. And so that's, that's the irony I found today because look, look when you jump down, ver, down to verse 31. Uh, look, what, look what it says there. Um, verse 31 says, But your little ones, who you said would become a prey, I will bring in, and they shall know the land that you have rejected. Their biggest fear was losing their children. And yet, how does God respond to that? He responds uh, by giving the land to their little ones. They, you know, we can understand that. I feel like I can relate to that. Like my fear is my children. I want to protect my children. Um, and yet I have to hand them over to the Lord each day. And so what do they do? They try to protect their children by taking matters into their own hands and saying, nope, we're going to go back to Egypt. And yet God punishes them for that and the best way that they could have protected their children was by being obedient to the Lord to, to begin with. And um, God gives the promised land to their children. Uh, what their fear was of them being slaughtered is the opposite of what happens where they will take the promised land and they will live and they will get to be in that place flowing with milk and honey. Um, and so this sounds a lot like James 4, a passage maybe you're all familiar with, but James 4, 13 through 17 says this, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. It's that verse, you know, verse 14, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. And, you know, I feel like the times we live in, that's more true now than ever. There's always been some kind of stability. Uh, but the last week we've seen our lives change every day. There's been new uh, laws and recommendations put in place every day, even sometimes every hour. And so we don't even know what tomorrow will bring. Uh, and so as these things unfold, we're meant to live in that moment-to-moment -moment trust that God knows what he's doing and to, and to be in obedience to him and trust that he, uh, what he wants us to do. And so, um, and so how, how did the Israelites wind up? Like what choice did they make after they learned of their punishment and they were going to wander in the wilderness for 14, or sorry, for 40 years? Uh, we're going back to Numbers 14, and so 39 through 45, this is, this is what happens. When, Mos when Moses told these words to all the people of Israel, the people mourned greatly, and they rose early in the morning and went up to the heights of the hill country, saying, Here we are, we will go up to the place that the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. Okay, well, they're going to try to make it right and go take the promised land. They recognize their mistake. But Moses said, Why now are you transgressing the command of the Lord when that will not succeed? Do not go up, for the Lord is not among you, lest you be struck down before your enemies. For there the Amalekites and the Canaanites are facing you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you have turned back from following the Lord. The Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up to the heights of the hill country, although neither the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed out of the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in that hill country came down and defeated them and pursued them even to Hormah. And so again, they try to take matters into their own hands. They decide, okay, now I'm ready to be obedient. And even though they're told, don't go, you've been given a punishment, God's not with you, they still decide to go. 
and they're defeated and they're chased back down and out. And so, um, you know, I was thinking about this in my own life and any of you that have had children have probably experienced this. Uh, I know I certainly have that when I ask my children to do something like uh, go clean their room and they are refusing or they're just getting slow to doing it or uh, they keep doing their own thing and ignore what I've asked them and then I remind them again or, or we get to the point where I have to give them a consequence. Okay, now um, no friends or no technology tonight or whatever it is. Now all of a sudden they're ready to go, okay, okay, I'll go obey. Don't make me lose technology. Well, I, I think both you and I at that point now it's too late, right? They have failed to obey. They've been given a consequence and even though now they're choosing to obey, it, it's, it's too late. And so we see that same thing here with the Israelites. Um, and, and so, um, you know, my hope and my challenge for you this morning is that uh, in these unprecedented times that you trust that God has good things planned for you. God had good things planned for the Israelites and they just didn't trust it. They got scared of what they saw in front of them. And so uh, I know that your lives are upside down but continue to seek him in obedience. Continue to trust the plans that he has for you. God is faithful in the midst of these unusual times. And so my prayer is that you continue to trust him. And as you do that today, I have two questions here I want you to ask yourself, uh, just as the Israelites had to do. The first is, what is your biggest fear right now? Right? The Israelites' fear was the death of their wives and children. And so they tried to take matters into their own hand. And, and then that's the second question is, what matters are you trying to take into your own hands? And then as you process these two questions, uh, give them over to the Lord. Allow him to, to be in control of those fears and to know what things you're trying to take into your own hands and to give it to him and to seek him and, see, and say, God, what is it that you have planned for me today? How can I be faithful to you and to be obedient to you? Um, let's have a word of prayer and uh, thank you for joining me today. So God, thank you. Um, for your word. Thank you for the encouragement here from Numbers. Um, Lord, the reminder is we see the Israelites disobey you because of, of a fear of their children, Lord, and they try to take matters into their own hands. So I pray as we are walking through times that are very strange to us and not what we're used to, Lord, that we uh, would not let our fears uh, control us, Lord, that we would not try to take matters into our own hands to fix things or make things right or uh, to avoid what we're afraid of, Lord, but we would seek you and say, Lord, if you will, that we'll do this or that, and we're going to live in obedience to you. Um, help us to be faithful to that, to trust you, and to know that you have good things for us, Lord, and to look to be honoring to you, even though, um, even though the world around us is very different than what we've been used to. Um, God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can trust that. Uh, we love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you guys all have a great Friday. God bless.